Zoom is going to be bringing the Mordekaiser out. This is something he's got tens and tens of games on across the course of his career. It's something we know he's incredibly strong at, especially since the rework. And against the likes of the Wukong, you already mentioned this matchup a little bit, Lyric. You said that Mordekaiser is going to be good into the Wukong because of the lack of magic damage. But when we think of Mordekaiser, it's usually a more defensive pick. True, Mordekaiser is one of these staple weak side top laners. Here in the LPL especially, I think it's a lot more common than in the rest of the world, but being a very good answer to Wukong since his passive had the magic resist remove, Mordekaiser always being very good in the isolated 1v1 too, especially with that bonus damage coming out from his Q, and he does scale much better than the Wukong. So on the side of JDG, you do have three lanes that have the ability to get some pressure on their own. It's going to give Kanavi a lot of options. Looking across the runes here, looks to be relatively standard. You do have the fleet footwork coming out from Maple on the Cassadin, but that is to be expected in a matchup where your Gao can find kill pressure. Just gives you the extra bit of sustain in that lane. It's pretty much the standard on Cassadin. If you can get through the laning phase, you have enough damage loaded into your kit as is. So just making sure you're able to kind of stay in lane, get that experience, get that gold, and get to the point where you're strong is the most important thing. <laughs> Look at the inventories for LNG here. Doesn't that tell a story about how this team wants to play this game out? We have three Doran's Blades, one for Flandre, one for Maple, and uh, sorry, not Doran's Blades, Doran's Shields for Flandre, Maple, and for Light. They want to be defensive. They know that they don't have the early advantages, and they're making sure that they can survive these laning phases. Pathing from XX is also very telling when we do have Sejuani with Flandre on a melee champion. So, of course, XX wants to look for some pressure in the top side early. Gonna, gonna win the level 1 exchange. Not until Zoom is level 3 can he really start looking to contest this lane. So, what I really want to see is where does Kanavi go on this trundle? Kanavi has never been a heavy early ganking jungle like we've talked about. In this split, when he does gank, it has been more around topside for 705. So with Zoom coming back in this roster, do they keep that up? Yeah. It has to be said as well, when you think about Zoom as a player, it's not necessarily about him dominating his 1v1 in the top lane. It's much more about how he can influence the other lanes as a top laner. And with a pick like the Mordekaiser, it's very much once you've got a few levels that that kind of thing can come on through. So. As I say that, Kanavi is coming up very, very early. Flandre the target, he's slowed up by the red buff, does not have his Mimic available. That was a really long range auto attack from Kanavi. Yeah, looks like Flandre was just trying to guarantee the bounce back in his lane, but with Kanavi starting leashless on top side, they don't know where he is. Oh, oh, insult to injury here. Gets the kill on the top lane and then steals away a chicken. XX can't do anything about it. Did he get the chicken? He got the chicken. He smited oh, it, yeah. So coming out really big for Kanavi, and there's nothing XX can do. I'm not quite sure why he's posturing around this like they can look for this. Yigao has pressure in the mid lane. He can turn. Of course, Flandre does have push in the top side, but you are playing against an early game Trundle, which is so strong in these duels. Yeah, I don't know what the plan is, why XX. <laughs> it, it looked like he really wanted to fight there, but... Like, you don't win mid. Top's not looking so hot either. I don't know if you could ever take this one. Well, a big thing about why Top is pressure right now is Flandre did, of course, just die. So he went back to base, did TP back in, had pressure. And Zoom building up this big wave. Top side is going to be pretty good because XX has the path towards the bot lane. So Zoom should be fine. But Kanavi gets another pillar. Ignite is ticking as well. Yagao gets one. We said Kanavi's not that much of a ganker, but... He's changing the tune in this game. He's doing so well at finding these early opportunities, which is funny when before the broadcast we were talking about how do we describe LNG. They are the opportunist team. They are the team that plays around kind of draft and lane states don't go the same place every time, but this game is Kanavi. Yeah, Kanavi really setting things up. And when you think about JDG, they're almost like, or historically at least, they've always been almost the default LPL team, right? They're this team that they'll do the right swap. They'll swap up for, for Herald at eight minutes. They'll do the tower dives when it's appropriate. They'll do what their comp dictates, but they don't usually change things up that much. This game though, we're seeing a very different version of JDG. JDG to me, this split has been very good. It's just kind of taking opportunities where they can find them. And this might be one of them actually. XX keeps on being aggressive on this Sejuani. Now he wants an invade. 
He's going to have to move up towards the top side. Zoom, you knew he was there. I don't know why you're this far forward. He'll walk away, though. He's going to be fine from this one. But Kanavi just keeping on XX's case. He will not let this Sejuani find any advantage. Oh, we do have a pause coming on through there. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get things resolved and figure out what the issue is with that one. But so far, so good here from this side of uh, at JDG. And also, most importantly, from Kanavi on this Trundle. Because you don't really think about Trundle as like early ganking, high aggression in the early game. But that's exactly how he's playing it. So Trundle is actually pretty decent in early game duels. If you can find the enemy jungle, you do really well in the 1v1. Yeah. And you don't have a lot of setup in your kit. Obviously, you do have the pillar, which is a lot better when you have some supplementary CC. But just very good solo start by him on blue. The enemy didn't know where he was, getting a really good gank off on top side, and then Yagao setting him up really well in the mid lane. And we already said Yagao is 6-0 and on this LeBlanc. He's looked yeah. so good on it throughout his whole career. And JDG, again, playing this early game a lot differently than what, we, what we've seen so far. Yeah, and you mentioned Yagao setting it up. It really was him getting the chains in before the gank comes through, making sure that the chain is already channeling onto the likes of Maple so that once that root does come on in, you can just allow Kanavi to get the pillar back on in and you can set things up beautifully to manage to get that kill. So really good stuff from JDG. And my question now is, how do they accelerate this? Because you've got a LeBlanc with a kill. You've got a Mordekaiser from the top lane that got the assist as well. Both of these champions can really snowball with Lees now that they've got them. And with Dragon coming up on the map, you'd expect Kanavi maybe to rotate towards the bottom half. That, I was going to say, I would love to see them go towards the bot side. You did draft something like the uh, Kalista, which is very aggressive and really yeah. wants to be able to punish her lane opponent. So keep your pressure in the LeBlanc. Bring that down towards bot side. We do see that Zoom still has his TP up. So they do have TP advantage to threaten the Drake, to look for a dive, these kinds of things. So go mid, then head bot. Well, it looks like they're going top. <laughs> it's Flandre. Forced away here. And you can see Yagao. He's not done just yet. They're going to go for a dive on this one. Zoom just trying to shove the minion wave in as fast as he can. Because Yagao... Excuse me, Yagao and Kanavi have revealed themselves in the top side. They need to get this minion wave dealt with because the rest of the map, they're going to lose speed on. Although, XX has come up to match. We've got a bit of a battle on our hands. Under the tower they go. Flandre with a nice little jump. I don't Whoa. know if... It, oh, he gets away with it! Flandre! Yeah. Okay, he doesn't get oh. away with it. Never mind. Yagao just walks back under. I thought he'd done the miraculous play. He maybe needed to just run away towards XX there. Couldn't. The pillar was in his way, so that was just uh. very good coordinate. Oh, they're doing it again. They're just going to rinse and repeat. XX, it's your turn. He's going to go down under the tower. Kanavi gets that. they still got so much health to work with. And the biggest thing to me, too, is Flandre is losing so much CS right here in the top side. Maple going to be able to even out a bit in the mid lane, but still getting those kills onto Yagao is going to feel really good. And now, as JDG, you feel fine just, again, kind of leaving Zoom on that island where he just picked up the Bramble Vest. It's going to be impossible to Flan for Flandre to take these trades and, again, start picking up things like the Dragons and the Rift Heralds, which JDG's always been a more obje objective-focused team anyway. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Dragon, it's already on the map. It's towards that bottom side, and you can see Kanavi will now head over to that half of the map. But this is one of the responses from this LeBlanc versus Cassidy matchup. Maple can just, oh, sorry, Yagao can just wander away from the mid lane. He's happy to spend a minute or two in the top side of the map because realistically, he lost one tower play in 10 CS. That's not the end of the world. Especially when you've already blown things like flashes on your enemy and it's really hard for them to follow when you have full vision control. They can't just walk into the fog of war. And another interesting thing to look at is the fact that Kanavi has a finished jungle item Pre eight minutes. Yeah, that is a really big troll in the jungle from Kanavi. And he'll be looking towards the dragon now. You can see him moving into the river on the minimap. And XX so far, he seemingly wanted to contest everything that Kanavi has done. The question will be how long can he keep that up? Because it's not been working out so far. Well, and you drafted Sejuani and Cassidy as your mid jungle 2v2. You, this is not a combo that's looking to contest, you know, early scuttle crabs, early counter ganks, and things like this. So I do just want to keep seeing LNG kind of take a backseat, slow it down. 
obviously not much they could do when they JDG found ganks on them. It, nothing XX can do, I should say, to really bring that back. Yeah, to to make up for the deficit that they've created in the early game. It's a difficult situation, especially on a tanky jungler, to make up for this kind of thing because you do rely on the damage from your laners, and when your two solo laners are already falling behind, what damage are you really relying on? Especially when you have the spot lane in Tom Clint Tavares, which now that it is six, you can look for aggression there, but JDG's the team in control. You need to follow where they go, so if they start something like the Rift Herald, you need to decide, hey, am I going to give this up, or do I just go elsewhere? But they're not set up to go elsewhere, so JDG they just get everything. By the looks of things, they might be lane swapping here. I think Flandre is going to be our mid laner for the rest of the game, trying to find the match against Yagao. Maple moves up towards the top side. What do you make of this, Lurie? Just swapping into this matchup, we talked about that Wukong doesn't have that early magic resist, which obviously won't help him against the LeBlanc still, but actually, now it's even worse. Yeah, now I, don't, I don't think Maple can defend against yeah, this. Kanavi's like, oh, you're going to swap cast into the top lane? Okay, we'll take top lane tower then. I just found myself a Herald. So. You know, I was thinking about it in my mind while I was speaking. It's like, wait, actually, this, this does nothing. <laughs> the more I think about this, the more it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And now the Herald... I think we'll get a second charge. Maybe not, actually. I think maybe this is going to be able to deny that one. But wow, what a way to uh, snowball here for JDG. 3,000 gold lead at the 9-minute mark, well, almost 10-minute mark. This is very rapidly getting out of hand for LNG. Also, Kanavi just completely playing around topside, leaving Loken and Lumao to their own devices, which has been the JDG story so far. But when you do pick something like the Kalista Tarek, which can play pretty aggressively, that's how we see it done over in the LCK, which loves this duo. Pretty surprised that they wouldn't look bot at all, but this game working out so well already. 3k gold advantage. LeBlanc is huge. Trundle is huge. Mordekaiser's massive. Oh, second chains go through onto Maple. Yagao doesn't have the damage because he had to use that Mimic just to get the CC, but the damage alone is enough to just force Maple out of the lane. And them sending Yagao to the top side, looking like they want to follow LNG's trade. I also do like the aspect that LeBlanc is much more mobile than the Mordekaiser, so you can easily push and get to mid and cover for mid and bot even faster than someone like Zoom would have been able to. Especially while Zoom doesn't have TP, but it did just come back up, actually. Yeah, TP is going to be available for both top laners, and also, importantly, Maple has TP available. So maybe there's some kind of play available for LNG here where they can abuse the fact that they have extra teleports and try and find a mana advantage. Now that it will, it can just go back to default with Zoom going back to the top lane. Maple will, Yagao, sorry, will still push in mid. So it will be quite hard for LNG to try to pull JDG across the map when Yagao will always be able to go first and Zoom will always be able to match a TP that Flandre makes. This bottom lane, though, has been about as passive as you would expect when you look at things like a Varus Tom Kench lane. In the Callista Tarot, you can be a bit more aggressive, but against the likes of a Tom Kench, it's always difficult to put the pressure on. They've pretty much just been farming up this whole game. I mean, Tom, Tom Kench versus Tarek, I guess this is kind of not not the expected result, but it can be an expected result of what would happen when you have this matchup. And we've already talked about Wukong, who's on screen now, the fact that he's much more of an early game bully. Ooh. Uh, he's on screen now, but I don't know well, how <laughs> much longer he'll be on screen for Zoom once the fight will get knocked up. And he's found himself in a one versus three here. He's attacking the clone, though. Wrong target, my friend. Flandre, the trickster, gets the kill. Well, he did stay on screen. Which he is did. the big thing here, and we he I just didn't stay on Zoom screen because he turned into a clone. <laughs> yeah, but now that LNG have made that play towards top, it gives JDG complete control of the bot side. So I like that Light and Duan are going for this recall. They don't know where Kanavi is on the side of JDG. They also won't know where Yagao is once he pushes out this mid lane. So just backing up, not giving JDG the chance to dive them around this bot side turret. Yeah, the only minor issue that we've got here for the side of LNG is like, they did get a kill top, which is really good for them. But how much are they sacrificing for that? Because Yagao is going to take away this blue buff. You've got plates going on the bottom lane tier one. And also, Dragon is about to spawn onto the map, and Kanavi has complete control of the bottom side of the jungle. When you're LNG at this point, I 
think you're fine with that as long as you're getting something in return, right? You're not going to be able to contest for this Drake anyway. So just sit back, get some gold onto your Kassadin. We already talked about on Wukong, it's not going to do much, but still extending the game time at this point is what you want to do when you are 3k gold behind and you have the cast in Sejuani. And on hit Varus, which of course scales much better than its counterpart, the, le the Lethality Varus. Oh yeah, the Lethality Varus very much about trying to snowball through the mid game, trying to just deal your poke damage and, and finish people off. But this on hit Varus, very much about the team fights, very much about trying to stay as a group and dish out as much DPS as possible in the fights. We did actually see Kanavi get pushed away from the dragon as XX did move towards that bottom side of the map as well, but just needed his lanes to shove out, needed priority in the mid and bot, and now they can restart this objective. JDG just doing very well. We've seen JDG this split have been a team that, kind of across the board, they're better than a lot of these teams under them, I'd say talent-wise and macro-wise. They're constantly making plays for the objective. Again, we have so many teams in the LPL that are focused on getting these kills. That's not JDG. JDG know kills are a mean to, means to the objective. And that's why when we see them against teams like LNG, where across the board, you just kind of outskill them. I mean, case in point right there on your screen, they're not looking to fight them in the mid lane. They're moving around to the bottom side of the map. They realize they've got an advantage with the vision that they gained in the bottom side to take a tower. And we do see that they split plate gold pretty evenly, which is going to do well going into these future skirmishes, looking out for things like the next Rift Herald, which is actually about to come up. If you're LNG, I would still say you, you give it up, you don't contest, you just keep looking to funnel gold onto your carries and say, hey, we made a few mistakes early this game, there isn't much we can do. If we look to contest this Herald, they can fall even further behind and put the game completely in JDG's favor. And you mentioned how far behind they are already. Four members of JDG above even one member of LNG. That is a huge disadvantage for the side of LNG. But JDG, they're feeling great. And they have to be in this matchup as well. Because if you remember where these two teams are in the standings, JDG, they're seventh place right now. They're in the top eight. And they need this win if they want to maintain that position. LNG on the other side of the board, they're in 11th. This is the start of their run towards playoffs if they were to make a run. But it's important to mention their schedule is rough. Something else that's rough is this potential situation for Zoom, but he is the Mordecai. He does have the Death Realm. But maybe he doesn't get to go for that one. XX gets pulled back under the tower. Oh, it's gone disastrously for LNG. Zoom's still alive! <laughs> Oh no, it's all gone wrong. This is why we were so excited to see Zoom back on the roster, but on the side of LNG, not sure you, you should be diving a Mordekaiser, but we did talk about that they shouldn't contest for the Herald. They just didn't go for the right play in contrast. With and that. the crazy thing is, like, I understand what they were trying to do with the Sidwani. Theoretically, you can just CC chain him, right? He never gets to use the Death Realm, but you're so far behind. You don't have the damage to finish this guy off. He's already got a Bramble Vest. Yeah, it would have been nice to see them still posture around the mid and top side of the map, counter this push that JDG could have made. And again, you're, you're trying to buy time, which they are going with the logic of trading is how you buy time, but not necessarily yeah. trading onto a Mordekaiser when you're so far behind. And also trading one tower for tier twos across the map. I don't think that's a trade I ever want to take. Laundry going in a bit too early, having to back off because he had aggro. And then we just see the CC chain doesn't work out exactly the way you would expect. And he's able to pick up the Sejuani kill when Sejuani is so far behind in this game. Really well played from Zoom. And Zoom is one of the players that before this game we were mentioning, you know, his gangplank, super proficient. But when you look at his career stats, Mordekaiser is one of his most played champions as well. And he's looked great on it. In week one, he actually played it twice, looked good in both games. I think it was against OMG. And JG having Zoom back is just such a huge boon to the team. But moving over to Kanavi, the man... The man that yeah. o Oppo or OPPO, how, how do you pronounce it? Oppo. Oppo, there we go. Hey, <laughs> hey, we don't have that in America, unless we do. You but do. No, <laughs> but, but that's not the point. The point is that he bought a Triforce. He's actually first in damage percent for junglers. So that's what I like to see out of Konami. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I'm, I'm a bit of a smartphone enthusiast. I'm so not at it's all. just hilarious to me, but that's it. A separate conversation. You are right, though. Konami has been insane so far this game. At least I'm right about something. <laughs> he may not, uh, 
you know, you may not have the greatest smartphone knowledge, but that's okay. That's not why you're on the LPL. But smartphones aren't going to be able to save LNG from the siege that has begun in this bottom lane right here. Loken just happily free hitting on this tier two. The whole of LNG has now arrived to try and answer for this play. In the meantime, Zoom is happily split pushing on the top At side. At the same time, LNG need to go for this or they're just going to slowly bleed out, but that is XX not able to find it. That ain't it, Chief. <laughs> XX flashes for the ult. Going to go wide, though. And that just means that JDG now can be the aggressors, now can force things out from LNG. Duan has to use his own flash. That's two flashes down from the side of LNG. Nothing burned for JDG. Flandre pushed out as well. This is going to be a tower drop. And Zoom going towards that proto belt first, so a lot more about getting on top of the back line or on top of someone once you pull them into the depth realm. He's already pretty inherently tanky with his Bramble Vest, so going to do pretty well against Flandre or getting onto someone like Light. Now, usually at this point in the game, I try and figure out what the what the big win condition is for the side of LNG is you can actually could be in trouble here. He doesn't have a whole bunch of mana, but there's not a whole bunch of damage either because Dwan and XX don't have much in the tank. Dragon will be taken here. But yeah, I'd usually be trying to figure out how does LNG win this game? And immediately your eyes drift towards the Kassadin, right? But he hasn't even finished his Archangels yet. He's only got one item for himself. He's still a long way from scaling into this game. True, on the side of LNG, Again, you're pretty much at the will of JDG. You pretty much just want to kind of posture around them wherever they go and kind of have a standoff and say, hey, you're not going to take this. We're going to we're gonna bring five man here. Hope they don't take it. And again, hope you buy more time. On the side of JDG, you do have pressure in pretty much every lane, considering you use all three lanes. So you can just constantly roam around the map towards the objective first, setting up vision, looking for picks when you have something like the LeBlanc. They also have a Kalista, so they can go for Baron. They can go for Baron. That is an option available. I mean, JDG, you don't even have to think about what options are available for this team right now because they have such a commanding lead. I mean, they have, what, 7,000, 6,000 gold ahead at 20 minutes. That is a humongous lead. Loken on this Kalista, as you rightly say, will be able to burn through a Baron with the Rend, with the percentage damage that he gets from the Blade of the Rune King as well. And the question will be, what can LNG do to answer? You've mentioned so far the game plan for LNG has been trading objectives. So JDG have to be cautious not to overcommit to something like the Baron and give up a lot elsewhere on the map. At this point, I don't feel like there is too much they can give up on the map, right? <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to make a silver <laughs> lining are, here, man. <laughs> you are, but the silver lining for, not silver lining, but again, the play LNG wants to make is just if JDG go for something like the Baron, commit your five man around it. Try to have that state off and say, hey, you need to be wary of a steal. You don't want to make this choice. You don't want to make this risk. Back off and yeah. live to fight another day. Definitely the 50-50 is not the play for JDG right now. It never is the play when you're this far ahead. It's just a risk that you don't need to take. Though it's not really a risk when you have a Smite, a Kalista, and a Death Realm for XX. True. So maybe they do want to take that risk after all. Oh, dear. I mean, everything I try and say about <laughs> LNG being able to contest just gets taken down. And now, speaking of taken down, LNG have no Tier 2 towers remaining. All they have is their inhibitor towers. They have completely lost control of their own jungle, which means the deficit that already existed is only going to get worse, especially in the jungle. XX doesn't get to farm his campsite. XX not going to be able to scale up the way we'd want him to. Um, just on the side of LNG, you really don't, you don't have anything. But to be fair to them, they have gotten to buy time so far, right? We haven't seen yep. any action in the past few minutes, and they are just getting to farm. And I am a little bit curious what the game plan right now is for JDG. Like, what... What's actually in the book here? Because it feels to me like they could, like you're saying, just threaten the Baron, just threaten going for that objective very early. It looks like they want to wait for the Mountain Soul. We see that Loken is on the bot side, so they're not about threatening the Baron right now. They just want to go for that more kind of safe objective. 
get that and then know, hey, we have this big shield for something like a Baron fight. We can threaten more aggressively and know we'll come out ahead regardless. So yep. JDG taking it a bit slow. Taking it a little bit slow here. They do need to be cautious not to take it too slow. Maples finished his second item now. We'll be able to rift walk away. And the cooldown, once you're past the level 11, is just so obscenely short. He can happily skip away from that one. But he will continue to to find more and more damage as this game goes on. And Loken won't feel quite so safe. And the thing is, you do have the Tarek, right? You've got the invulnerability that can come out from Tarek's ultimate. But Maple can kill people long before that ultimate comes on through. It's a very slow animation to get that invulnerability. Yes, if this game does go long enough, that isn't going to end up doing a lot for JDG. It does feel like the game is still at a point, though, to where even if Maple, let's say, gets on top of Loken, that he won't have the damage to burst him down in time. Yeah. So that's why we keep saying that Tarek is so good against these comps that want to jump in, which Wukong, Sejuani, Cassidy definitely wants to jump in. They really want to jump in. and You know, we've got Duan as well to kind of enable that. We mention it relatively often. Here we go. Ooh. Fight comes in, though. It's going to be the Radiance down onto the whole squad. Loken is invincible, and he's stacking up the Rens onto Duan. Flandre forced to flash as well by the chains. XX barely gets away with his life there, narrowly dodges the stun. You mentioned the Dragon Soul before. That's what's on the menu here for JDG. It's also really interesting that we keep getting these compositions with Tarek, but no no real engage tools in jungle or top lane. So these Tareks keep having to function as the engage tools. We saw Lumao flashing in to make that play. Yeah, he's able to just force everybody away with the Dazzle. And now, over towards the Baron. You mentioned it before, with that Dragon Soul in their pockets. Now they can really threaten this one. It's not a whole bunch that LNG can do because, as you said, the Death Realm available, the Rend available, as well as the Smite from Kanabi. Well, next is just gonna get out. Now, JDG, we want them looking for this Baron. We see those spam pings coming out on the map. They want this Baron. Well, off they go. The Baron is the call. And LNG, this is a potentially last chance saloon for them. They've got to try and make a contest. If they lose this one, this might be their last shot. Duan stepping up. XX is going to be spotted out and pillared away as well. Zoom not on the same side of the pit as XX, though, so won't be able to get the Death Realm onto the jungle right now. Bear in mind the rent's still available. Zoom actually going to have to use the Death Realm. The steel can't come through from XX. Zoom is totally alone in the back line. Can't finish off Duan either. Zonya's on both sides, but it's a double for Yagao. It's time to clean this fight up. There's another one. Light, he wants to go massive, but Zoom doesn't even fall. 11 to 1. Baron for JDG. And I think that might just be game. Zoom's return game. Really, JDG making a statement against LNG. 26 minutes over 10k gold up. And the game's over. JDG just absolutely crush LNG in game number one here. And LNG, they've not been looking too hot in recent weeks. They're on a four-loss streak. And this is going to be another game going down for them. But JDG, the return of Zoom, the return of the Dumpling Brothers, looked fantastic in game one. 